you know, I talk about the uh, talked about the last man standing, but think about it. Most people are they're trying to stand, and there's nothing wrong with some of the some of the stuff I'm hearing. There's nothing wrong with standing financially. There's nothing wrong with standing in a job or standing in a position or a place or those are all good things but everybody focuses on standing on financial gain or position or power or place or and you know Abraham <clears throat> I'm glad that Abraham Isaac and Jacob stood on the truth and, and had power at the same time Noah Moses all of them Moses the meekest man that ever lived the Bible says <clears throat> To have some power, as long as you're meek and as long as you can control it and not use it for selfish, but use it to help others, that's good. But what about standing on the truth, you know? Even if you, there's probably somebody somewhere in the world that's in a, that's in a jail cell, an isol, they're probably like, there's probably somewhere, somebody somewhere that's in a jail cell isolated they might have been pushed to the limit and they might have killed somebody just because some some gang or something was messing with them and they might be in this little cell isolated from everybody else and they might just be in that cell and nobody even knows they're there and they stood for the truth and they had to defend themselves <clears throat> and they got accused you know you don't know who's standing for the truth. It might be somebody you never hear about, hear from, or whatever. <clears throat> Elizabeth Elliot talks about her husband who went into the jungle. We would have never known what happened unless she's talked about it. What was the lady in the concentration camps that there's people who stood for the truth even in the concentration camps, you know. They had faith. They had faith. And so there's... In every age, it's just a repeat fractal story. In every age, there's people that stand for the truth. In every age, there's people who stand for what's right, and you never hear about it. You never hear from them. And if you try, if they try to speak what's right, they get shut down by the system. There's people out there. Think about how easy it would be. Let's say there's a let's say there's a wife out there who's standing for the truth. And she gets shut down by her husband. She gets shut down by her neighbors, her family, her friends. She gets shut down, and you'll, you, she might be a bleep on the screen, but then it goes away. Why do you think that happens? There's a lot of women that stand for the truth you'll never hear about. They sacrifice for their husband, their kids, their family, their neighborhood, their church, and you never hear about them. You'll never know. There's people out in the world that stand for the truth that are unknown, but God sees God sees the heart. God knows. So I just want to acknowledge that. When I say last man standing, it could be it could be a man or a woman. It might even be a child who's raised in such an abusive situation that they they made it through. Some of those Hollywood uh, actors that were abused. They were brainwashed. You got to rise up in the system, and they were abused, <clears throat> but they finally made it through. Actors and actresses, you know. Harvey Weinstein or Stein or whatever abused a lot of uh, actresses. The, like I say, whenever, whenever somebody says, "I want to be a woman of power," or "I want to be a, a person of power," or "a man of power," or whatever. That sets them up for an Illuminati sacrifice or Illuminati uh, ritual abuse or whatever. It sets them up because the heart, 
It's the devil's looking for somebody who wants the world, the flesh, and a prior life. <clears throat> if your goal in life is the world, you want as much world, you want as much flesh, and you want as much pride. If those three things control you, even if one of them, one out of three, if those three things control you, you are being you're in a position where the devil. See, God looks on the heart. The devil's going to set you up for big time failure. But if you don't care about the world, the flesh, the pride of life, that's in Genesis. That's in Galatians. Apostle Paul talked about it. The, you don't care what the world says. You don't care about pride. You don't care about being lovers of pleasure instead of lovers of God. The world, the flesh, and the pride of life. <clears throat> you don't care about your own life. Jesus says, if you don't hate mama, sister, brother, wife, even your own life, you're not worthy of the kingdom, you know. And so there's some women out there that were married to a narcissist that was messing with their mind their whole marriage. And they finally got away after 20 years. Praise God. Hallelujah. And but the church will beat them up and say, oh, you're divorced. Yeah, but you didn't have to live with that narcissistic psychopath, did you? And then they get a divorce and get free, and then they get attacked even more. They're free, finally free from that psychopath, and then they get attacked by people who are religious but lost or religious and don't really understand the battle that person went through. And so standing for the truth might not be anybody that you ever know, and they might be right next door to you. They might even be in your own house. You might, you might not even know the battles that our people are going, people are going through. You know, but when somebody stands for the truth, and they're being persecuted or gang stalked, don't discount them as crazy, because. This, I've, I've talked to enough people. I've talked to at least five women online that were married to certain men that asked them and tried to force them to do things that was contrary. I never judged them. I never said anything. I just listened and I felt sorry for them, you know. It's a hard life, you know. So there's a lot of people who stand for the truth. Um, you'll never know their name. You'll never know. I mean, I know some people that had it rough, you know. Sometimes people bring it on themselves, you know, but, you know. They were raised especially the generation certain generations they didn't have the knowledge that people have now just think narcissism wasn't even known 20 years ago it just started people didn't even know it existed people didn't even know these mind games existed so the the predators had free reign and so I'm I'm sure there's millions of people out there that stand for truth the best they know how. And they've been brainwashed. And they escaped for their... <coughs> they escaped for their life. They escaped with their life. They just barely made it, but they're alive, you know? But yeah, gang stalking is the is real people. Gang stalking is real. Moving into freedom and holiness from a child to to as you as you start to move towards freedom and holiness. It's almost like it's like the you're rising up, right? You're rising up to that freedom, to that holiness, to that knowledge, to that uh, spirit walk. And so you, you, you go two steps, 
knock back one. Go three steps, knock back one. No, go four steps, knock back two. Five steps, knock back one. And so the system is so contrary to the spirit walk and the freedom in Christ that people get knocked back. So there's no reason to judge anybody. And there's really no reason to compare to anybody because everybody's going through a similar battle. It's, it's just like a fractal. It's, I might not walk in your shoes, but I've walked in similar shoes. I might not walk the path you walk, but there's a similar path. You can have compassion. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. The Lord, okay, that's one verse. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. That's another verse. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. That's Old Testament verse. It sounds like a New Testament verse, don't it? The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. That sounds like New Testament, don't it? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. I gave you three verses. There's more. The only thing I can tell people is to stay in the book of Psalms until you until you get free <laughs> and never forget and always go back to the book of Psalms at least once a month. Read some Psalms, you know. Remember where you came from when you do get free. Don't forget where you came from. Actually, if you really look at it, the fact that you desire the truth means you're already free. You just don't know it because you've been surrounded, you've been brainwashed by the system. But the fact that you desire truth more than anything means you're already free. You just they just did a brand, they just did a mind game on you to make you think that you can't just walk away. A lot of people they can walk away, but they're living in fear because they think they can't walk away, but they can. And then when you realize, oh, I can walk away, then you stay in the situation and you overcome. Not always, but I'm saying, yeah, I could walk away from whatever situation. But if I just stay in it, I'm going to overcome it. Because I'm already free in Christ from, from eternity past to eternity future. Once you get saved, you're free. And that's what they hate. They don't understand you. You're free in Christ, eternity past, eternity future, and they can't stand it they can't stand it Costanza Newman is scripted everywhere they can't stand you Costanza Newman Jerry Seinfeld signed that Jew seek a sign saw Newman and he was just sitting there on the couch chilling the new man, Newman. Seinfeld represents the legalist. Newman represents the born-again new man that the legalist thinks are just being lazy because we're not under law anymore. We're just chilling, resting in Jesus. So every time Seinfeld dealt with Newman, he'd say, Newman, Newman. So deep down, the legalists, the ones, the Jewish legalism or the legalist Baptist, or the legalist anybody, they see Newman, and you're chilling and resting in Jesus, and they say, Newman, I can't stand you, Costanza, because they hate your freedom. It's written in the scripts. They're telling you to your face. It has to be written everywhere, because that's what the system is. You're either free in Christ, or you're a slave to some kind of legalist. Hello?